Maybe the shout, let me know. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, my name is Asaf. It's a typical Israeli name, so I usually use my middle name, my home, when I go to Starbucks. So, if anybody needs any help with the Starbucks orders, let me know. Um, I'm here to talk to you about um, current technologies and the solutions that we have today for um, optimizing health. I'm not here to sell anything, but if I am uh, talking about some of our product lines, then feel free to stop me or ask me more questions later on. Uh, I work as a general manager for Flytech, uh, it's a division of Fibro Animal Health, and I'll be happy to see you guys later on in our group of years. So, everybody's talking about precision livestock farming, right, which is a very fancy way to say that we're not interested just in the masses, we are looking into the individual um, animals, and larger animals, it's much more developed uh, when we're looking at the specific cow, right, we can measure um, and we can tag the individual um, animal, but when we're dealing with poultry, we usually say, let's talk about the flock instead of just uh, everything all together. And uh, PLN for precision livestock farming is a lot of tech that is available for us today. How can we utilize that in order to provide better care or to measure uh, better performance? We are using different types of sensors, cameras, microphones, um, temperature, humidity, etc., etc. We even have automation tools, right, and robotics. We'll have the vacuum cleaner that will walk around uh, our farm and our houses. And we have a lot of bells and whistles talking about big data and AI and a lot of things that we want to do. The question is, how do we do it? So this is a chart that shows two different lines, three. And we have like uh, maybe customer number one here. Uh, probably you're not going to see it, but if you look at the orange line versus the green line, obviously performing better, right? Versus the blue line, which will be, at the end of the day, our goal. And what will be our goal? We would like to somehow focus on this delta. How can we increase, right? How can we do better, whether it's weight or mortality or whatever? By the way, anybody has any idea about what are those charts? Who are these charts from? It's just a comparison between the NASDAQ and the uh, Dow Jones and SP 500. But I think you've got the idea, right? I'm trying to talk about and communicate that we all want to do better. We all want to outperform our competition. We all want to have better results and better uh, results for our bucks. So how do we do that? What can we do as a farmer? How can we optimize? And how can we get that delta? So we'll invest in any type of technology that you'll see here at the show floor, right? At the floor. You'll have humidity sensors, you'll have water consumptions, you'll have better feed conversion. We even listen to the birds to hear if they're performing as we expect, or is there any hulling or any other issues that we have. We will get better ventilation, as the gentleman before me just spoke about, better temperature control that a waving of, uh, of the birds. All of that, at the end of the day, will try to take into account and to generate decisions and to make um, in increasing our performance. But what, how does it really work to, like today, right? So if you look at a typical solution that you would buy from any vendor, it'll give you some data points, right? You probably know this chart, right? Every, I think it's already been taught in kindergarten, but from data, we are going into information, right? That's, I think, a lot of times where we are stuck today. We have a lot of data, we have a lot of information from the tools and the technologies that we've invested in, but we, that's, where, that's what we have. We need to make our own minds about what do we do with that data? How do we use it? How do we convert it? How is it all connected together? In order for us to move to the next step, which is getting the knowledge out of the technology that we just invested in, right? The best part is when we can actually get some insights from this information, from the data, and then we can make really, we can become really, really smart. Anybody knows what's the next part of this slide? What's the next box? Five points or 10% discount for anybody who knows? In the election year, we will talk about conspiracy theories, etc. but that's like uh, 
for our next presentation. So how does it really look like today if you're a veterinarian or if you have any relationship to anybody who's trying to give better care to animals? This is big data. A hundred files, desktop, file, thousands of Excel files, dozens of libraries and folders and share files, etc., and lab results, usually in PDF forms, right? And we need to take all that into account and try to assess that. And usually, when we look at the results, and you can see the bad tigers on the graphs on the bottom, on the bottom left, if we see left, that's bad. If we see a lot of lines, that's high CV, that's bad for us, right? It's, I'm talking about common sense, but this is our reality today. When we get information from serology or from lab results or from other works that we have, it's already too late in order to have an impact on the flock or on the animals that we're measuring. And why is that? The reason is because we live in a black box environment. We have lots of technologies, we have great tools, but when we tell our folks, hey, you should feed at this amount, or you should vaccinate this specific vaccine at that specific date, and this specific dosage at that temperature, you tell that to your crew, but you don't really know what's happening from the point that you have prescribed, what you want them to do, to the point that they're going to the field. And there are a lot of tools and technologies, and we've created one which we'll be happy to show you, which we call Phytech. But again, I'm not here to sell anything. But even if you just look at that tool, and that specific portion of the technology, without taking things into a, in a better or bigger perspective, without connecting the data or the information from system A or system B, you would still be stuck in the same story of a bunch of different data points and information. And what we think is that we have gone to the point here in the poultry industry, in our technology part, I gave a presentation at Poultry Tech Summit, where it was really tough to get the projector to work and the sound to work and in today's environment. And we have great tech out there. But in our domain, in our industry, there's so many things that technology can take apart that we're not utilizing yet. And one of the biggest challenges that we have is how do we connect it all together? How do we basically take the information from system A, take the results from system B, how do we look at that in a more holistic way rather than opening five different applications in order just to maintain or to change the control in my, in my specific farm? So we at Fintech, we believe that there is a place for moving away from Excel files, moving outside of that, dozens of uh, spreadsheets and files into a more holistic approach. And we've worked hard to develop these type of software solutions that can interface and integrate with these data points. So it doesn't really matter if you're using lab A or lab B or getting um, or implementing a specific ERP that you have that uh, measures uh, the performance or the dollar per kilo. We need to integrate and we need to interface with these type of data points. If you're already measuring weights with the smart scales, nobody wants to type that information into multiple softwares, right? So the industry has to move into standards, standardization, such as in the human environment, where there are protocols on how do we exchange data between different softwares and between different systems. And when we'll get to that point, we will be able to take that knowledge and move it away from just data points and to better decision making points. What we've built is a system that allows the farmer or allow the individual um, uh, veterinarian to deal with all of the different challenges that he has is facing today when he's dealing with his vaccines or medications for animal health. So today you guys go to your HMO, right? You open up the app. You see all of your prescriptions, you can see all of your records, your last blood test, right? You have it, whatever system you guys are used to, or from any country almost that you're coming from, right? We are talking about a similar approach for our flock. How do we manage the health data of our flock? We want to provide you with the health record that will take everything from what needs to be done with that flock, everything from performance, feed, medication, vaccination, all the way to the individual person who is actually taking the vaccine and then providing it and injecting it into the bird. 
How do we track that information? How do we collect that? How do we make sure that what we as veterinarians prescribe is actually happening in the field? And as I said, we have developed some of the leading technology tools that will allow you to define those data points in the software environment, which is cloud-based. That means you don't need to install anything. You don't need to pay for sophisticated computing power. And it will automatically be able to monitor the actual vaccination that you're performing in the field by reading the temperature, by reading the, by defining the exact dosage, by collecting all of that information to a system that, again, is in an open-minded and integratable to other platforms that you already have or will have in the future. That's how we believe that we will be able, at the end of the day, to move away from this black box environment into a more integrated approach. So, if you remember the photo that I started my presentation with, this is, uh, everybody's talking about Jab GPT, right? So, but this is a presentation I've, I've done a few months ago. I asked Dolly. Dolly is an AI, data-driven, uh, artificial intelligent, photo animation generator. I, I asked him, hey, can you create chicken made out of digital wave of data stream? And then I got this image. Automatically populated out of the cloud, and I can use it, I own it, I just need to put the DALI logo on the corners on the bottom, and it's my proprietary data. So just imagine what you can do with computing power, what we can do with a lot of data sets, and a lot of information in this world that we are living in, in AI. But, you have to be careful with what you ask for, because when I ask the system, hey, can you create the 3D render of a chicken vaccination gun? This was the end result. So, again, there's a limit to the computing power. We have to have the human uh, element involved into it. Again, I know I spoke a lot about things that are obvious to a lot of us and things that we want to do. Without being too much of a salesperson, it's hard to talk about technology that is unique. But, uh, again, you are more than welcome to come to our booth at uh, 6009 if you want to see how we handle these challenges with regards to specifically to vaccination and to data usage in our world today. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I'm happy to give you a little bit more time for your break for the next speaker. But if there are any questions.